hello everyone uh, welcome we are in part 3 of this webinar series uh, today we are going to go over python tools for analyzing uh, no2 data from trop omi and uh, omi sensor this is going to be a 2 hour long session uh, we will try to take a break uh, towards after one hour of the session so before we move on uh, i would like to make sure that everybody has followed the instructions uh, to prepare for this uh, session which includes uh, installing uh, python uh, with correct version all the packages which we will require to read the tropomi and omi data as well as uh, you have the codes and data uh, downloaded uh, for today's session so please make sure if you have not uh, downloaded or installed uh, maybe this is the right time to do it uh, before i start because we are going to very quickly go over exercises and if you do not have installed python or codes not available on your computer then you will not be able to follow along with me and uh, but <clears throat> so with that let me start uh, some of the slides uh, before we move on uh, so that everybody can uh, get a feeling of what we are trying to do in today's webinar okay let me start here so again uh, my name is pawan gupta uh, i'm a research scientist here at uh, nasa's marshall space flight center uh, my colleague uh, dr melanie fallet cook she is a research scientist at nasa's goddard space flight center in washington dc and uh, we have colleague selvin who is uh, helping us with this webinar series so with that um, i'm going to start on today's presentation so the slide one basically showing the three sessions which uh, uh, we are on session 3 today where we are going to talk about the python tools for the trop omi and omi data in session 1 we did cover about the omi data product which is ozone monitoring instrument and how to get the data some of the fundamentals of about the omi instrument and some basics about the getting no2 data from the space observation in session 2 last week uh, we did cover up introduce the new european space agency sensors called trop omi which is aboard uh, sentinel 5p satellite uh, which has been providing very high resolution uh, uh, space observations of no2 and other trace gases including aerosols um, we did talk about how to get those data and we did uh, uh, introduce several online tools where you can either get the data or visualize the data or extract various pieces of information about the data so today is week uh, session 3 uh, and this is going to be a two hour long session and where we are going to talk about the python tools uh, to read tropomi and omi data sets so in this session our goal is to uh, read the net cdf data file uh, which uh, in which the tropomi data are stored uh, we will read and map the no2 data specifically we will so show some example of aerosol index mapping as well but the primary focus is the no2 data we will read and extract the data at a given location so this is one of the challenge many people face when we start using this space observation which comes for large region uh, in very large uh, file sizes and often end users are interested uh, in getting data over a particular location of their interest so we are going to show you how to do that and then the last one is if you are interested in 
if you are not very familiar with the NetSig your data file and if you want to extract the data into CSV file which you can open in your spreadsheet application like Excel uh, we have a Python code which will actually dump some of the NetCDF fields into the extract file into a CSV file and we'll go over that so for the learning objective for this session is read extract and map tropomi and omi data sets uh, using the python tools so this is our goal and we hope that everyone who is attending today's webinar will be able to perform all this task by their own after at the end of this uh, session 30. so the data sets uh, and task we already talked about this is just a list uh, one more thing I want to make sure to understand that uh, today I will not go through a lot of PPT slide this specific PPT presentation is made for your reference so if you want to follow along with me I will go through the exercise in Python but this PPT or this presentation will serve as a reference for you so that if you are miss some uh, step or if you want to go uh, back and do it in your own time you can use that as a reference so uh, again uh, data omi data and drop omi data uh, we are focused on no2 data but we will show you some uh, few others like aerosol index as well uh, task we already talked about the there are four different tasks we are going to do we'll list the SDS we'll map the data we'll extract the data or location and then we'll dump the data into a CSV file now before we move forward please go to this web page if which is given on the top the link is given on the top and you can click on that link from your PDF version if you have not downloaded please download the presentation slide the OMI Python code and data and the drop OMI Python codes and data uh, and the drop OMI NO2 data all of those should be downloaded uh, before we can move forward this so for those who has done it already uh, that's very good you can um, continue working for those who has not done yet please do it I'm trying to uh, I'll give you three minutes uh, so uh, before I move forward uh, so those who has not done it yet they can do it uh, meanwhile I'm also going to ask a couple of questions uh, using polls uh, to get a feeling of uh, how much we have done so far before we move forward great so as you can see on the slide uh, we will be using Python 3.6.5 version uh, and we'll talk about different version in a bit uh, but if you do not have installed anaconda we are going to use python using a package called anaconda it's an open source and can be downloaded and we have provided the instruction uh, we have heard from many people that the link was not working um, there's another link posted uh, on the again chat a while ago so if it has not downloaded or installed it should not take long more than five minutes to actually download and install if you have a fast enough internet connection so please do that now if you have not done it uh, if you have done it very good so I'm going to pose a question here uh, a poll question and that will help me understand uh, how many people have done that already okay so there is a poll question saying what version of the python you plan to use for this session uh, we recommend using 3.6 but for whatever reason you are unable to get 3.6 and if you have other version please mention here uh, so during the exercise if we have specific instruction which uh, to work with any other version of the python then we can tell you uh, hopefully um, anything which is working in 3.6 should work in 3.7 uh, there are changes needs to be make uh, to make it work in 2.7 uh, and we'll point them out as we move along 
but we cannot guarantee that your code will work in 2.7 without making changes. So our recommended uh, format is 3. Point, uh, version of the Python is 3.6 and 3.7 should work just fine. Okay, uh, so looks like close to 90% people are using either 3.6 or 3.7, which is very good. Uh, those 10 12 percent people uh, who are actually using other version or older version uh, we will try to uh, tell you the difference uh, but uh, and I hope you are proficient enough in the Python to modify those changes uh, otherwise uh, we will we may not be able to help you during this specific session on those aspects so you may have to uh, get some help uh, from online searching on those aspects okay great uh, before we move along I have one more question uh, to ask and that is I want to understand the your expertise so rate your experience in Python programming on the scale of 0 to 4 so if you have no experience or you have never used Python coding uh, in your work or study or school you can say zero and if you feel that you are expert enough and can write your own code and modify the existing code and you have good experience uh, the uh, uh, you can scale from one to four uh, anywhere where you feel comfortable and this will help us actually to understand uh, the the nature of audience uh, which we are talking so that we can pace our exercise accordingly uh, to the to your pace so we have about 5% people who have a lot of experience uh, or about 18% people have good to uh, good experience in dealing with the Python code so I request all those people who have good experience and who uh, consider themselves an expert in Python please remember these codes are sample codes and you can make them better uh, there are several things can be improved in these codes and if you do so uh, we request that please share that with your fellow uh, audience uh, in the question answer or the check box if you're doing something or if you want to send your modified version of the code which has improved or has added functionality in those or you have uh, done some more innovative work with those code or if you have written a new code please share with us uh, and depending on what that code does uh, and after reviewing everything uh, we might be able to include those in our future trainings and with uh, and we will make sure that credit is given to the people who has created and uh, modified those codes. So we look forward for your comments on the specific codes and we look forward for your modification, improvements, new codes on this topic. So please, uh, those who can, who has uh, good skills on Python programming, please do share with us. I personally do not have very good if I have to put myself on this 0 to 4 scale I will say I'm around 1 so I'm just showing you how to run the codes uh, and I can make few modification uh, but I'm not expert on these uh, Python programming I do coding in some other language so Python is kind of uh, new to me but please those who can uh, share your ideas and codes to us with us and with the rest of the audience okay great let's move along uh, so I'm going to start now the exercise uh, and for that I will show you my screen so that you can follow along with me so I'm going to go out of the PowerPoint and then show you the screen but please remember these uh, there are a screenshot on the PPTs or the PDF files so if you get lost or if you get behind during the webinar please just try to look the uh, PDF first and see where you are on those slides 
Okay, I'm going to show my screen now. And then on my screen, you will see a lot of stuff, uh, PPT. So I am using for this exercise a Mac uh, computer. Uh, those who are using Windows computer, things should look uh, very similar once we get into the Anaconda and Python. Uh, but initial things may look differently and I'm sure you should be able to find the Anaconda on your computer. So what I'm going to do on the Mac, I will launch pad and find the Anaconda Navigator. So here is my Anaconda Navigator with green circle with some broken lines in between. And then once I click on that, it will start the Anaconda version. By default, Anaconda should look like this. On the left side, you have different menus, home, environment, and learning community. We are not going to go into those. And then it shows different application. Like I said, Anaconda is packaged in open source. It support various type of application, including R, Python, uh, notebook, and many other things. We are going to use a editor power for ideal ide uh, which is called spider and it is on the fourth on the top row, row in my view in your computer it may be a different number so just look for the name spider and there is a symbol uh, with the spider web so i will click on the launch and the spider should open up once I open up the spider, by default, it comes in this view, but on your computer, it may be, it may appear a little bit differently. So you can set that layout according, uh, if you go in the view, and then you can say, set out the layout of these panels. But I'm hoping everybody has this default layout which has on the left side where the code will appear where we can edit the code on the right side the top panel here we will try to display the files and codes which we are going to use so it will serve as your data directory view on the bottom is your Python kernel or console where we will run the code. It's called IPython console. So uh, I would like to show you a few things uh, before we start. First, let's set up the directory where the data and codes are there. Make sure both code and data are in the same directory. The way this code has been set up is that the code reads the data from the same directory. If you can change that, and we will show you how to change that uh, uh, as we move along. But for this exercise, make sure both data and codes are kept in the same directory. OK, so what I'm going to do is, if you see here, this is the directory in which the current uh, current default directory is this one. I will change that. So there is a on Mac, there's a, on the right, top right, there's a folder icon. And if I put my mouse over there, it says browse a working directory. On window panel, it should look similarly. It may look a little bit different. Uh, and I hope you can find it. So I will click on that. And then it will open up directories of my computer just like this in the pop-up window. Uh, for this specific training, I have created a folder under my training. This is 2019 and you may have a different director structure, session three, data and codes. So this is the directory in which I will work on my computer and I will say open. So now the, if you see the path of the directory, 
in which the data encodes it has been displayed here and what I can do is if you go on the top right panel then there are three options it says variable explorer file explorer and help right now it says help I'm going to click file explorer once I click that file explorer there are list of files in that directory start appearing so you can see there is a text file and then the dot .pys are the python codes which we are going to use and there's dot nc these are the drop omi data files uh, and we have already gone in last week presentation what these file names stand for so for example this aer ai is aerosol file co is carbon monoxide file no2 is no2 file ch4 is methane file so those we have gone uh, into details in week two uh, in the last week uh, for trop omi and in the first session or for the omi okay moving along uh, let me quickly ask a question here so that I can make sure that everybody is on the same page before I move forward. So you can respond here, how is it going means whether you are on the same, have you opened Anaconda? Have you seen the three screen as I'm seeing on my computer, three different panels, have you make sure your current working directory has all the data and codes and can you visualize them here if you can do all those tasks please say yes i'm moving along with you if you are behind and need time uh, we will try to help uh, but you will have to uh, there is a limitation on how much we can help okay so about 80 percent people are along with me and then 20 percent people uh, are behind so I'm assuming those who do not have right version of Python or they do not want to follow along uh, but just to make sure those who wants to follow along uh, you open the anaconda then you will come up with a let me actually show you very quickly the PowerPoint slide so you open the anaconda you will see the list of different uh, available editor you click on the spider once you click on the spider you will see default version with the three panel three uh, layout with the three panel left sides the code area right side top is where the files uh, and will appears or the directory area and the bottom right is the ipython area where the code will run and this is the next one is the directory in which we have all those files okay let's move along now i want before we start i want to show you one thing in the ipython console on the bottom right so in this ipython console on the right side top right of the ipython console where you can see my mouse if you click on that a icon which is kind of setting icon and if you click on that there are various option here and one of the option which we are going to use uh, frequently throughout the session is called restart kernel so this restart kernel what it does is basically it will reset the python ipython kernel so that all the variables are reset with the default so when we run certain codes some of the variable are saved in the ipython memory and we don't want that to uh, take over when we run the next code sometimes it can create the errors if your things have not set up properly and like i said these codes are not really very professionally written so there are things which uh, we do not want to carry over or some sometime if errors occur in one code then it can propagate into the next running so we want to make sure we reset this kernel and i will remind you after each code we run okay so the first thing 
uh, we are going to do is run the test code. Uh, the test code is called testcode.py. You can click on the directory on the top and if you double click there, it will open on your left side. So now you can see the individual code here. And this code is very simple. What this code is doing is just importing all the packages which we need to run the, to read and extract and map the tropomy data. So you have NetCDF, NumPy, System Calendar, these are, don't worry about those, those are default come with the Anconda. Uh, the pandas uh, which we are going to use to write the data as output and the map and map plot they, they will be used to make the map uh, in the code. So once your code is open make sure do not edit anything. If you click on the left side it become an editable window and you will be easily able to edit things. I strongly recommend please make sure you do not edit anything on the left side of this window. This is uh, in order to make sure those codes are running properly on your computer. If you edit anything, it may create errors. Uh, even a small space which you put on this code can create an error and it will be difficult for me to debug uh, during this session. So please do not do any editing. This is just to, uh, for you to see how the code looks. Now I'm going to click the play button. Once I click the play button, you will see on the bottom right IPython package, there is a run file and it shows the entire code path and it runs and it comes with nothing. So it means everything is good. If it comes with warning or errors or with some kind of weird output, that means there is something wrong with any of this package. But right now it is coming with no errors, nothing. It means your test code is running good and your Python has all the packages which you need and you are ready to go. Okay. So with that, let me ask you another question. And while you are responding to this question, make sure you are resetting the kernel. So if you did not find the zip, uh, the test code on on the zip file, which you downloaded from the page, I want everyone to go back to the web page and in a couple of minutes see the code. You should see another link actually which says the test code and you should be able to download that code now. Okay, if you do not find the test code, uh, I'm pasting the code actually in the checkbox and you can copy paste those lines from the chat box, just the one which I copied from the hash to the PLT, just copy paste that and you can copy paste on the left side of your panel uh, in where the Python package, where the Python editor is and you can actually copy paste here just like so this is your empty this is your empty space you just take those from the pole and copy and paste it here and that's become your test code and then save and say run and then it should run so remember the green arrow is to run okay so and please uh, take a couple of minutes to respond to this question and try to run the test code uh, either you can get it from the asset page or 
you can copy paste the code from the checkbox and put it in your file and run it. Okay, uh, about 70% people have uh, done this and it's working. Again, for those who are not able to make it work, there are two options. One is you can go to the RSET page and download that or you can actually the, take the code from the checkbox, just copy this uh, line starting from the hash to the PLT, copy it on your editing site of the uh, Anaconda or the spider panel and then click uh, green arrow button to run it. Uh, with that, it should work. Uh, on the RSET page, uh, if you go to the part three, you will see a link Python test code, which you can download and run it if you're not done. Again, uh, let's take one more minute for those who has not done yet. Uh, there are two options and uh, then we will move along. Meanwhile, those who are ready, make sure you go to the setting, restart kernel uh, so that we can and then I also don't want to see the multiple codes here in my editing window so I will go on the file menu on the top and say close uh, there's a close all and there's a close I will just say close so that my current file is closed okay so let me go to my ppt again uh, here These are the slides we already have gone through. The next thing I want to make sure that everyone is able to do it. Now, if you look through your directory, there is a file called file list dot text. And if you double click, it will open here on the left side. And what you see in this files are the list of the two files, which are also in my directory one is aerosol file and then another one is no2 file so make sure you have again do not edit this file this is as it is you can create this file while simply adding suppose i want to add the ch4 data also so i can copy this from here let's see if, it, if i can copy control c and then I can paste it here. Uh-oh, sorry. It's not working. The copy paste is not working, but I can copy it from my directory. So it's basically just simple list of the file where things are. Copied here and then I pasted it here. So. This is just another uh, uh, list of the file in which we are going to process the data. Okay, so I'm going to take that off for now uh, and then close this as well. And it says no save change. So remember this file list is the list of the files which we are going to process through the code. So I want, before we start, I want to ask you another question. Okay, is there a file name file list in your data and code directory? This is very important. If you do not have this, then you won't able to run any of the code uh, successfully because all the data it reads from this file. And that file list which you want to process is not in this file list, it, your code will not work. Moving along, uh, the first code which we are going to go through is, so I'm, I'm going to switch between PowerPoint slides and the real exercise just to give you what we are trying to do here. So now we are going to do, uh, read those NetCD file and first task we will do is print SDS. Okay, what do you mean by SDS? SDS is scientific data sets. Uh, for example, amount of NO2 in tropospheric column 
or aerosol index value for certain region or some other parameters. So each net CDF file have multiple parameter as we have seen in our last week presentation using panoply that when we open the net CDF file there are many many variables in those files. Those variables are called SDS or scientific data sets. Uh, they contain information about uh, metadata and the specific parameters and their uh, different kind of uh, attributes like missing values or offset if there is any uh, or the units or their name sometimes the method in, through which they are produced. They also have uh, geographical location like latitude, longitude. They also have uh, sun satellite geometry. So all the variable which may be required for you to analyze the data, to uh, make assessment of the data uh, are in those net CDF file. And we are going to just print those lists in our first exercise. So to do that, again, go to your uh, IPython console and then click restart kernel and then it will restart uh, to make sure that uh, uh, nothing is coming from the first uh, code which we read. So to do this we are going to open the code called read underscore tropomi and list sds.py. This is the code which we are going to run and you will see the code is appeared on the left side. Now this is a simple code and those who are expert of Python they can definitely take on this code and improve it and make it more simple, simple or more versatile. So these are two routines. Uh, which they are using. I'm not going to go into details of the routine, but I'm going to go to the part where actually it calls for that. So the important one of the thing on line 102 on my screen, you can see on the code side says file list. Open file list.txt in read format. So as reading uh, the file. So what this line will do is actually read the list of files which are there in the file list.txt which we have seen earlier and then process each file one by one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will go on the top and click the play button. Once I click the play button, you will see an action on the IPython console on the bottom right. And it says, would you like to process and it will print the name of the first file in the file list dot text directory. And that is an aerosol file. And I say yes, I can just type Y for yes and hit enter. Once I press type yes and then hit enter. Okay, now it has printed a lot of information. So I can actually browse and go back. So I will scroll up where I had enter the yes. So here is my file name and here is the yes which I, and now it has printed a lot of stuff. So this looks very similar to the screen which we have seen in the uh, panoply exercise last week. Basically, it's going to give you all the metadata and all the parameters which are there in the so next global attributes. This is institution which has pursued. This is source. It's a Sentinel-5 uh, precursor satellite name. Tropom is the sensor. Uh, the data is level two. It has all the time date information and a lot of other information as well. It also gives you the geographical coverage of this data sets. Now, the parameter specifically which we are looking for are starting here in the bottom. They are under name called product. Product is subgroup in the net CDF which contain the data sets which we need. Okay. 
So the one which we are interested, I'm going to show you in a minute. It's called aerosol index 380 to 354. This is very similar aerosol index which we get from the OMI satellites. Um, it has fill value is used for this if there are no data the coordinates means it's given for each latitude and longitude values and the dimension is this one so it has 3245 by 450 dimension and the resolution is uh, standard 7 by 3.5 kilometer okay so it is printed all the sds now i'm going to print the same thing because the next file in my list is no2 file i'm going to say yes and then it will print same thing for the no2 so the product the sds which we are going to use is called uh, let me find it it's, uh, it's tropospheric It's called tropospheric nitrogen dioxide tropospheric column or the standard name is tropospheric mold contained of nitrogen dioxide long name is tropospheric vertical column nitrogen dioxide so this is nitrogen dioxide concentration in the troposphere in short words and the unit is uh, molecules per square meter uh, if you want to convert that into molecules per square centimeter, there is a multiplication factor to convert that into this. You can use that as well. We are not going to use that here today. But this basically gives you what is inside that NetCDF file. And since we only had two files, the program came out and then it basically shows. So this is very simple code to see if you are wondering what is inside that NetCDF file. So this is all the things they have and we will use this information to read those specific parameter in other codes as we go along. Okay, uh, I'm going to move along. We'll show one more code and then we'll take a five minute break uh, and then we'll uh, do the remaining codes on the tropomy and omi. So the first step I'm going to do before I move to the next code. Uh, let me show you my PPT and then it will basically shows the different uh, part of the code again where you can edit if you have different file list you can change the name uh, if you are going to modify this code for other uh, data sets uh, make sure you change this product which is a subgroup name in which the data are kept so what are this application for this specific code uh, each net CDF file several, uh, contains several geophysical, geophysical parameter uh, and we need special codes to read this net CDF file. So either you can use Panoply, which we saw last week, or you can use this code to see what is inside those net CDF files. And then you can decide to use uh, for your analysis. Okay, so the next one we are going to do is map NO2. Now we have the file, we know what parameter are inside those files, so let's try to map them. So reminder, close the code in a spider and reset your IPython kernel. So I'm going to reset, it says restart, and then I'll say yes, and then I'll on my left side I'll go to the file and say close so the code is closed now my ipython console or the spider is appears as it was starting in the beginning of the code now those people who are having issues or getting errors uh, make sure you have all those libraries if you do not have those libraries, then you will not be able to get actually to this point. So with that, I'm going to take one more uh, code and run it before we take a five minute break. So the next code, which we already talked is about 
uh, mapping the data. So there is a code called read and map tropomy NO2 data. I will double click on that code. It will open up on my left side and you can see the code here. Now you will see some similarities between this code and the earlier code. They are built on the same using the same code same framework with some modification. Again, it will read the list of file. You can see the line 23. It says file list dot text. This is the list standard, the same file list through which we are reading the list of the files or the data uh, data uh, data file list. Now, if you move along in the code, uh, this is the group product under which our data products are saved in the NetCDF file. Uh, and how do we know that? That we did know using the first code which we ran. Okay, the print SDS. It does have that information. We also saw in our first code that the name of the SDS parameter which we want to uh, extract for NO2 data is called nitrogen dioxide tropospheric column. Okay, make sure you if your data directory does not have these four files, NO2, aerosol, CO, CH4, make sure you copy that from the Tropomi NO2 data directory. Uh, if you download it from the RSET page, there may be multiple link through which you have downloaded the data. There may be a separate uh, zip file for the code. There may be separate for the NO2 data. Make sure you put those files in your current directory. If you do not have those, then it may not run your code. So make sure you do that. So uh, again, if your Tropomi data is not in the same directory and if you downloaded it separately from the RSET web page, make sure you copy those direct, uh, data files in this directory in order to run that. Uh, now, this code is also actually modified to run on the aerosols and the parameter which we are going to run is called aerosol index 354 388 this is very identical parameter as you get from the omi using the same wavelength and then the rest of the code is basically reading the latitude longitude it's also going to extract the different pieces of information it will calculate some statistics like mean medium of the data uh, and then the last part of the code is basically mapping the data. So it will take, uh, use the best map package of the Python to map the data. And here you can do a lot of modification improvements to make the map much more clean, uh, user, uh, which can serve better to your specific application. Okay, so let's run this code again. I will click on the play button on the top left and the code comes with exactly the same instruction as you saw in the first code. Would you like to process that? And the file name, I will click yes and press enter and then it start printing some numbers on the IPython console. So it says the average of this data is this much. The standard deviation is this one. The median is this one. And this is the latitude longitude range for the data file. Now the next question it is asking is would you like to create a map of this data? Please say yes or no. Yes. And then again press enter. And then it will take some time and then create a map. So this is remember, it shows a map on your screen here and the title of the map is the name of the file from which we are reading the data. And then on the subtitle, it says aerosol index from 380. This is the long name of the SDS which we are reading here. Aerosol index 354, 380. So the long name of this is called aerosol index from this to this and the values are plotted on the map as color scale minus two to four. Now the aerosol index, those who understand it's a UV index of uh, which represent the amount of 
absorbing aerosols in the atmosphere and this specific file represent uh, data from August 2018 last year and there were during this observation of period there were several fires in the United States and the Canada and those produced very high uh, those emitted a lot of smoke in the atmosphere and the smoke is an absorbing type of aerosol and create high values of aerosol index so you see red color over the US and Canada that's nothing but smoke in the atmosphere and shown as high values negative values of aerosol index are typically represented either it's cloud or uh, scattering type of aerosols uh, in different places so now this code is going to ask you would you like to save this map I will say yes and once I say yes watch the top screen where the file explorer you should see a image created dot png so it will have the same name as the data file and will say dot png again you can change that in the code so uh, here is the out full file name i took just the file name and took out the last three dot nc instead of that i put dot png you can change this file name anything you like and if I open this file, you will see a image file is open. You can again clean this map, modify, you can specify different location, project it uh, and make it better for your own presentation. But this is again a sample code for you to run. Now, once the map is shown as PNG, it will go to the next file. It will do the same thing. Our next file is NO2 file. So anyway, before we take a break, I want to show you the NO2 map also. So my code is asking, would you like to process the NO2 file? I'm going to say yes and hit enter. Again, it will print all the average statistics, uh, average standard deviation, medium, and the latitude longitude range of which are there in the data file. Uh, so you can see all those value here it will ask whether you want to create a map or not I'm going to say yes and then it should do the same thing as it did for the aerosols data so now you can see the NO2 map um, it's again asking whether you want to uh, save that as PNG I will say yes and if I watch my top screen a PNG file has been created corresponding to NO2 file and I can open that and we'll see similar uh, file again you these codes are again sample codes you can uh, customize this code how this uh, color scale should be visible in what kind of unit it should be how the title should look how the map should look uh, should map plot the entire granular so right now what it is plotting is one entire orbit so a satellite overpass as you can see that because of the shape of the earth the polar regions are covered uh, much more in one single orbit compared to the equator or the low, uh, lower close to the equator in the other uh, latitude range so you can see how the uh, data file is shaped so this is one orbit which takes about uh, 100 minutes for the satellite to make this measurements uh, again you can see some high values of NO2 in different places you will see close to the source regions you will see high NO2 values because of their short lifetime uh, again you can play with this uh, as you move along so since I have only two files in my data uh, file list.txt it ran the two it created the map uh, with that I'm going to take a five minute break uh, for and will allow all those people who need uh, to catch up until this point uh, I will request the attendees who have completed to help them through the question answer or chat box uh, my colleagues will also be able to help you if you have a specific question 
But remember, we will not be able to help you in installing Python package or Python or Anaconda because that's uh, it takes time, and uh, right now it's not the good time to do that. But if you have trouble in running the code or having errors, uh, we will be able to probably help you some. Uh, after five minute break, uh, we will come back and run remaining two codes, and then we'll move to the OMI data. With that, I am. I'll be back in five minutes. Everybody take a break. And while you are taking break, uh, I will put a couple of questions here for you to respond. So you can respond to this poll while you are taking break. Uh, if you need to get water or need a while break, please take it now. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Uh, I think uh, we had about eight minute break uh, and I'm seeing a lot of response for this question. This is just in between. I put uh, to refresh everyone's memory and I wanted to get a feeling how you plan to use the NO2 data. Uh, I'm going to just for every, close the poll and share the results for everyone's benefit. So good part of the people are trying to use for research, uh, identifying NO2 sources, regulatory, regular monitoring, and then good part of them are using for their class works. And there are some who have not identified what they want to do, but uh, everyone is welcome to use the, the way you want to use the data, but make sure uh, you read through some of those documentation which we have uh, gone through in the past uh, week uh, presentations and those documentation and data are available for you to refer at any time you use the data sets. Okay, so I'm going to reset my IPython kernel and then I'm going to go to the file menu and close the code. So now my IPython console is clear and my editor on the left side, spider editor is also clean. There's no file showing there. So the next code which we are going to use, uh, let me bring my PPT again, is going to be, we already looked the NO2, uh, just to show you a couple of things on the NO2 mapping code. Uh, here's the uh, place in the code where you can change the color scale. Uh, it, it has been given here. There's a link also if you want to change uh, the code in the application. So this code was in just an example. Uh, you can use this code for various things. Uh, and this map can also actually identify to uh, regions of high pollutions uh, in different parts of the world. So the next code which we are going to go over is called this will help us to extract the data at a given location and i understand many people would like to do that from that large file you want to get the data on a given location again uh, similar instruction uh, one thing I want to actually make sure people understand uh, before I run this code. So the way this code works is remember uh, each pixels in this uh, file have a latitude and longitude. And when you want to extract the information about on a certain location on the earth, it is not always necessary that your location is same as what is coded in the data. Uh, so there may be difference in lat long. So what you want to do is you want to get the data from the nearest grid of the satellite. So this code will uh, ask you to enter your location and then extract the data for the nearest pixels in the data file. It will also average, this is often used when we do validate the satellite using the ground location, we often average the data around the ground station. And the averaging is done either in three by three pixels uh, around the center of the station. So in this 
uh, chart here what you see on the left side which says outputs you see a red sub, uh, square and then the two blue squares and then a lot of uh, cross black cross so this black cross or ads is nothing but the location of the satellite pixels and then the blue boxes are box of five by five pixels in x-axis and a y-axis y direction and the inner blue box is three by three pixels in x and three by three pixels in the y direction and the center blue uh, dot and x is nothing but the location of the ground station so if you are this is your ground location then you can average either 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 pixels around that location from the satellite and those statistics are provided in this code again you can modify this code to run uh, from for multiple files uh, you can look through them you can make that those changes easily in the code so with that let's move along and try to run this code uh, the code name is called read top on NO2 SO2 uh, NO2 data at a location py so make sure it might be a little bit different name in your data file uh, but it should have uh, top on me and location words in the file name once you cl double click your code will open on your left currently the code is uh, tested to handle the two data sets uh, nitrogen dioxide tropospheric column which we already mapped and aerosol index which we have already mapped earlier so uh, the code structure is again the same it reads the file list so we have two files in those file list dot file and then we will basically run through and try to get extract the uh, no2 and aerosol index value on a given location uh, in that orbit so first I'm going to go on the top and play that green arrow and it will run again all the codes are designed in the same way they run in the same uh, style they'll read the file from the file list and ask you whether you want to process so first it is asking whether you want to process the aerosol index file I will say yes why and then hit enter on my computer button so it prints uh, similar values which has been printed in the previous mapping code it will print the standard deviation range and all those things now it's asking a different piece of information it's saying please enter the latitude you would like to analyze so this is the latitude of the ground location for which you want to extract the data and I'm going to say 35.5 based on the map which I saw earlier I know the data were available over the US so I'm going to just pick a pixels where I feel the data is available in this particular file so 35.5 and then I am going to enter a longitude of minus 100 degree which is 100 degree west and then press enter once I press that will display several information now this is critical so it says the nearest pixels to your entered location is at latitude so I entered 35.5 and the nearest pixels available to from the satellite is at location 35.51 and minus 100.010 so it's pretty close to what my initial locations are the value of aerosol index at the nearest pixel is minus 2.39 the average values there are it says there are nine valid pixels in three by three grid centered at your location so there are remember those two blue boxes small box is three by three it's giving you the statistics of those small boxes which is shown in the ppt and then it is also giving you the statistics of that bigger blue box in the ppt slide so five by five and three by three now this is for aerosol index file now since it has processed this values now let's assume you want to process get this value for thousands of files 
so you can go into the code and change the way it is asking you can hard code this locations uh, of uh, so here in the code here is the place line 84 to 87 here is the place where it is asking the location information you can hard code if you have only one station you can change the code if you have a list of location and then it will print for every single things and you can also dump the data into actually a file uh, again all those modification in the code you can do it easily uh, we are not going to do here we are just showing you uh, a sample codes which you can take and use it and modify it according to your own uh, needs so next file it is asking for the no2 i'm going to say yes and enter again it will display print out same information it has done for aerosol file i'm going to print the same location as i put for my aerosol file and then it will print actually the values corresponding to nearest pixel the what tropospheric vertical column not side is this much and then it is giving me the statistics of the 3 by 3 and then the statistics of 5 by 5 pixels so, and then program ends because there were only two files before moving to the next code actually i'm going to show some application of this code uh, which is very critical so if you look at the slide uh, usually you can modify this code to validate the satellite data uh, and one of the important steps in validating is extracting the uh, satellite data on a given ground location so on the left you can see uh, you have run somebody has run the code for several uh, months from February 2011 to October 2012 and extracted the data from OMI census and plotted as a time series and you can do that this code will help you to do this uh, perform this task it will not plot a time series but you can write another piece of code which will plot the time series after extracting the data on the right um, it just shows the results of uh, uh, some of the validation studies we have already seen this plot uh, in our uh, part one of the presentation where we talked about the OMI data uh, and the similar code can be used to uh, perform this kind of analysis. So there are several applications for this kind of code. Okay, so the next uh, one is suppose let's say you want to analyze the data into Excel and you want to just basically dump everything which is there in that CDF file or certain variables not everything but some variables which you are going to use for for the analysis and you just want to put them in a csv where which you can handle much more or you can see how things are looking in the data uh, it can be opened in any spreadsheet uh, files things like that so we have a code to do that uh, again the code will create a file like this and let me go through the code and run it so first thing i'm going to restart the kernel yes i'm going to close the file and then i'm going to open another file uh, program called read tropomy no2 and dump ascii so this code is going to take read the nc file and then write them into a nice CD file. Now, we are not trying to read every single parameter which is there in the net CDF in this particular. We are only going to read certain parameter which may be relevant and you can change that. Uh, you can go to the code and then you can change which specific parameter you want to read or not read and dump into the net CD file. So I'm going to just say play and the first one is aerosol file remember same sequence of running the code i will say yes press enter now remember this task is la uh, it's time consuming because it has to read a lot of data and put that into a csv file so it may take a little bit longer so now what it has done is 
it says this is a tropomy aerosol index file these are the variable which has been already written out in a csv file so what are those variables latitude longitude qa values remember we talked about the qa value in the last week's presentation each pixels of tropomy data comes with a qa value and in order to make a quantitative analysis uh, qa value must be considered so those are the qa values this is aerosol index values uh, precision other parameters uh, there so all files have been saved successfully now if you look again to your directory the same directory you will see a dot csv file has been created and it's the same aerosol ai same name as nc file dot csv now i want i will open that file and show you in a minute but let me first complete this code because it's going to the next file what is my next file no2 file again it's asking if you want to process or no i say yes hit enter and then this is an atrop only no2 file and it's reading the data right now and then once it reads it will print all those variables so latitude longitude qa value again the same parameter which was there for aerosols you can see they are same dimension i mean they are same resolution and then there are many different parameters which have been read from the dart net cdf file and output in the csv file now you can see in your working directory there is a csv file with no2 i'm going to open that file double click uh, it's a it's a large file you can see 276 mb so it's a big big file uh, and it may not open properly here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open an excel and then in excel i will open this file so this is my directory so it, it opened up here right so you can see year month day hour but let me close from it here so that you can see it much better in excel uh, this is no2 file and since the file size is too large uh, excel may not be able to open it completely but it will open partially at least uh, so let's wait it's still working Oh, it's taking time. Okay, it says alert file not loaded completely. That is okay because I just want to see what is inside. It may not load because the file size is big. That's why the, there's not enough number of rows in Access to load all. But good thing is you have the data now in very simple ASCII format, which you can see through and use it as you need. So you have year, month, day hour minute second of the observation you can see actually the time is changing as satellite is moving in different parts of the world through that orbit and then latitude longitude qa values and then all the parameters which you need so nitrogen dioxide troposphere this is the one which we are mapping and then the other parameter air mass factor which we talked uh, in last week presentation uh, to uh, use to convert the slant column density into the vertical column density i'm going to close this don't save change so these files are created here let me put out few other questions uh, before melanie starts okay since we already looked uh, the mapping code I uh, just want to make sure people who already run it successfully can they make some changes uh, in the code to run it for their own country or region or region of interest. Okay, so 
56% people says they can modify it. 33% people are saying maybe, which is pretty good. Uh, okay, let me bring back this basic question. Uh, we have been using this drop OMI and OMI data uh, and uh, I want to make reinforce this uh, the fundamental of the measurement from the satellite uh, in which part of the solar spectrum OMI makes measurement. So again, very simple question. We have been looking that for in all three sessions. Okay, 75% people have done correct answer which is ultraviolet so this is uv instrument uh, there's a little bit of visible also in that up to 500 nanometer but that's very uh, you know, few channels so most of the channels are in uv part okay let's do another uh, poll before we move to the Okay, we looked this in the last week presentation. Trop OMI's spatial resolution is approximately how many times higher than OMI? We, I think in one of the slides we have gone specifically to this. Uh, we have 30 seconds and then uh, uh, we will go over uh, OMI data and OMI codes. Okay, so the trap OMI is about six times higher than OMI. 90%, 91% people responded correctly, which is very good. So if you are wondering, you have to calculate the area for the pixels. If you calculate the area of the pixels, considering 13 by 24 from OMI and 7 by 3.5 for, uh, or 7 by 7 for trap OMI, then you comes with a number of, which is about six times. So great. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, transfer to M Melanie and she will actually go over some of the TROP uh, OMI codes uh, to do similar stuff. So Melanie, you can take over now. Great. Thank you, Pawan. Um, can you see my screen? Oh, no, show. Now yeah. showing my screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so hi everybody. So we're get, just gonna we're running late, so we're gonna take about 10, 15 minutes to go over um, the very similar codes, but for the OMI instrument. Um, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this, but I want to let everybody know about a previous webinar that we did last year. Actually, um, you can find it on the RSET webpage under health and air quality online trainings. It's called Data Analysis Tools for High Resolution Air Quality Satellite Datasets, where um, we had an entire session dedicated to these OMI codes. So that's where you can find more information about these. So we're gonna be looking um, in a similar, we're gonna be using SPIDER, just like Pawan showed, um, but I'm using a Windows environment. So for those Windows users, you'll be able to see this slightly different interface. Um, so hopefully everybody has downloaded the OMI Python codes and data zip file seen here. Inside this file contains file list.txt, again, very similar, two OMI NO2 data files and the codes we're going to use. So just so I can know, I'm gonna open a poll to see if everybody has these things all in one directory. Okay, I'm already seeing a couple people saying they don't um, have these. They can be located on the training page for this webinar series in a zip file. You can just download the zip file and unzip it and everything should be in the same directory. About 50% of people have answered um, and most people are kind of set and ready to go. So we're going to continue because we are a little bit short on time. So here you see um, my working spider window. My codes, very similar to what Pawan showed, is here on the left. My working directory with all of my file list.txt, my data, and my codes are here. 
on the upper right in my file explorer pane, and I've got a terminal, an IPython terminal open on the right. The first code we're going to go through is the read OMI NO2 SO2 and list SDS.py. And very similar to what Pawan showed, um, here is where it opens the file list.txt. This can be any name that you want. And this particular code is going to list um, the different variables in the data fields structure within the HDF file. I've also included um, another code, which is read OMI NO2 SO2 and list SDS geo, which very specifically reads the geolocation um, variables, such as solar zenith angle. So if we, just like Pawan showed, we've got our code up here, we run it. It's asking if we would like to process the first file in our um, file list.txt, which is our OMI NO2 file. We say yes. And it lists each variable contained within the data file as well as the dimensions of the variable. I'm including that information here because um, it's relevant for uh, a, later, a later code. So you can see some of the things that we talked about yesterday, um, I'm sorry, back on Tuesday, last Tuesday, cloud radiance fraction, total column amount NO2, column amount NO2 trope, column amount NO2 strat, quality flags, scattering weights, um, information, detailed information about each of these variables can be found at, in the file specification document that you can find on the GES disk. Um, so, if we want to process the next file, it's going to be the same um, because they're both OMI and O2 files. If we restart our console and click on our geolocation, we go through the same procedure. Does it, do we want to process the first file in the data, in the file list.txt? Yes. And here we see the geolocation variables available. Latitude, longitude, um, and uh, solar zenith angle that we referenced uh, last Tuesday. So we don't need to process this one. So I'm actually going to say no. Our next code that we're going to look at is read and map OMI NO2 SO2. In this code here, again, this file list.txt can be any file you want. Here, we're referencing the particular SDS that we would like to plot for OMI NO2 files. It's the column amount NO2. If you are plotting SO2, it would be plotting OMI total column amount SO2. And further down, um, on a brown line 101, you can see it's referencing the color map. Here's where you would change um, the, the color scale of your plot. So restarting our console. And as Pawan mentioned, as, as this restarts, um, you can loop through. You can change these codes to loop through um, instead of being interactive for every single file. So we run our code using this green triangle up here. Would we like to process the first file? Yes. And we get some information about this particular file. It's an OMI NO2 file. This is the average uh, total column NO2. Oh, sorry, troposphere column NO2. Um, the average. No, this is the total column number two. Um, the average of the data, standard deviation, median, and information about the latitude and longitude. Would we like to create a map of this data? Yes. And we see a preview of our map. 
um, these colors just happen to be very light. Um, if we want to save the map, yes. And we'll go ahead and we'll process the next file as well. So oh, you can see that the reason for the difference in color is the scale. You can see this is 1 times 10 to the 17th, and this is 1 times 10 to the 15th. Um, so we would like to save this map. Also on this map, you can see the effects of the row anomaly um, in this plot. Um, yes, we would like to save the map. And looking up at our file explorer window, we can see that two PNG files have been created. So they're within our, our working directory. So I can bring one of those up. So we now have those saved. Our next code, read OMI NO2, SO2, and dump ASCII. Here is where we list the SDS we want to output, and this is why I included the uh, dimensions in uh, the list SDS code, because when you choose your SDS to output, they all have to be the same dimension, otherwise the code will, will give you an error. And again, um, you can change this code to loop through many files instead of having it be um, interactive. We're going to restart our console. Okay, and we're going to run this code. Yes, we would like to process this. It says all files have been saved successfully, and you can see we have a text file up here. We'll output the next one as well. And when we preview those, you can see we have a text file that can be loaded into Excel or um, any other editor that you'd like to use. Our last code is read OMI NO2 SO2 at a given location, or at a location. And for this, um, here we are looking at the column amount NO2 variable, but again, you can change this to any variable that's located within the file. Same thing here, if you're reading an SO2 file, it would output OMI total column amount SO2. So restart our terminal. Okay, when we run this code, as we saw with pollen, yes, we would like to process it. It's giving us latitude and longitude information, and it would like a latitude, we're going to say 30, and a longitude we would like to analyze, and we're going to choose negative 90. And then we get information about nearest pixels to that location. So the nearest pixel to that location is at this latitude and longitude. This is the, the value of that pixel. There are nine valid pixels in a three by three grid. It gives you some statistics about that grid and in a five by five grid. Looking at the next file, we're going to look at the same location. And we receive information about that location from that next file. Um, using this, you can pull in, uh, OMI data for a given location 
um, you can automate this to loop over many other files. Um, and you can start to look at, you know, you can start to actually look at changes over a given location over whatever time period you are interested in. Um, I know that was fast, <laughs> um, but Pawan kind of explained um, kind of the science reasoning behind all of these and went pretty detailed through the tropomy. Um, so hopefully that sort of laid the groundwork. Um, I apologize that this was so quick. Um, we, I'm going to see if everybody take a quick poll and see if everybody was with me. Okay. So it looks like about 90% of you are with me. Um, I apologize for those who are behind. This recording will be available um, about tomorrow or the next day um, as a resource. You can also email us <clears throat> or you can check out um, our detailed OMI NO2 and SO2 webinar that we gave last year that I pointed to earlier. At this point, I think we're going to take about a minute and then we will start the Q&A. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, uh, before we take Q&A, uh, I'm going to very quickly show you a bug which somebody helped to find. Okay, so uh, somebody actually pointed out uh, there is a bug actually in the code and I want to make sure everybody is able to correct it. We will correct and post the corrected version on the website. But this is in the Tropomi file uh, data, uh, the code which use read the Tropomi data and dump into a ASCII file or CSV file, which you can open in Excel spreadsheet. So there is a small bug which is uh, creating wrong value of month uh, of the date which is output in the CSV file. So I just want to point that out. Uh, so if you open the code on the left hand side, you will see if you go to the line number 73. And what you will see is you will notice that that M has been used twice for month and minutes. So uh, that is creating a wrong value of month uh, in the output file. So to fix that, I'm going to change M to MT, just put another T here. And then the same thing in the line 80, uh, when it is putting the data into array, instead of this M, I'm going to say MT. So line number 73 and line number 80, I have put the, uh, this correction also in the chat box uh, for you to correct it. Uh, if you're running it now, you can check that. And then once you do that, save it, and then run it again, say yes, and then it should create the right file with the right uh, date information in the output. Uh, like I said, we will uh, fix this and also reload on the RSEC page so that you have a bug free code there. With that, let's take uh, actually a three minute break and then we'll take question answer. Uh, we'll start uh, responding to the question answer uh, in the transcripts and then uh, we'll post that later on the web page. Thank you. Okay, so the first question is the measurement of the behavior of NO2, methane, and PM2.5 at the surface level as we correlated with the satellite diet. Uh, I, the measurement of the behavior at the surface level as we correlate with satellite diet. Okay, I'm really not sure uh, what this question is. Uh, if you want to refine it, please uh, type it again in the question answer and we'll try to take it later. Because I don't understand the question at all. 
the drop OMI data in molecules per meter square can be transferred to ppm? The short answer is I think no, uh, but I am not 100% sure. Uh, Melanie, do you know anything? Um, I think the data are in moles per meter squared, right? Yes. Um, I think you can, but I would have to look up how. <laughs> yeah, it, it may require additional uh, details uh, about uh, because one is uh, kind of mixing ratio, another one is count of molecules. That's Okay, question three. Uh, we will try to find actually for the question two, we'll try to find the answer and uh, when we post the transcript, we might provide more detailed answer there. Can you also show some trend analysis in how to interpret those aerosol and to value some kind of correlation to other parameter like pollution growth, population growth? Uh, thank you for that suggestion. Uh, I think that is beyond this webinar series, but uh, some of these we do cover more in our in-person training. And uh, hopefully in future we will be able to do some online training focusing on the trend analysis and interpretation of the data. Question four, when I saved my map as dot png the scale on the right shows up chopped up where is the code do you manage size and resolution okay let me quickly open the code if i can show the portion where we do the image uh, scaling so oh and i think you have to share your screen again oh i see okay sorry let me, oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sheldon. So if you look my screen on the left side, this is the code which map. On the bottom of the code, when I'm saving it, I'm setting the resolution to 300 DPI. Uh, I'm sure there are other options uh, for this uh, specific command I'm not familiar with but you will be able to actually set all the boundaries and maybe you can set position of the plot and of the uh, scale, but this is the place where to do it. Thanks, you can take it over. Question five, do these plots that you just produced already have any quality flag applied or removed? No, uh, we have not uh, applied any quality flag on those maps which we created. This is the data as it uh, but you can actually do, you can make that modification in the code and apply the quality flag. What is the difference between aerosol index 354, 388 precision and aerosol index 354 and 388? So the first is just showing the precision uh, value and the second one is actually value of aerosol index for that specific wavelength range, 354 to 388. Similar, next question number seven is the, what is the difference between aerosol index at 354, 388 and aerosol index 340 and 380. So uh, this is something has to do with the historical records of aerosol index. Uh, there used to be an instrument called TOMS, uh, Total Ozone Monitoring Instrument. It uh, used to operate at uh, 340 to 380 nanometer and that's where uh, aerosol index used to be calculated. Uh, when OMI was launched, uh, the new wavelength has been adopted, 354 and 388, uh, to calculate the aerosol index. Uh, so the new sensors now, now have both channels actually, therefore they are trying to give you a equivalent uh, aerosol index uh, so that you can compare or use along with TOMS or OMI data. Uh, in terms of the uh, physical significance, they should be very close to each other, but there can be some difference just because of the change in the wavelength. Uh, 
क्वेश्चन नंबर एट वॉट आर द यूनिट ऑफ एवरेज वैल्यू एवरेज फॉर एनो टू डेटा दो स्मोल पर स्क्वेर मीटर दैट्स द वैल्यू विच वी हैव यूज इन दिस एक्सरसाइज यू कैन कन्वर्ट दैट इन टू मॉलिकल्स पर सेंटीमीटर दर इज अ स्केलिंग फैक्टर गिवन देयर बट इन दिस करंटली वी यूज द वन विच कम्स विद द डिफॉल्ट Why aerosol index values are low, which is about minus or 0.01. If there is not, if there is no aerosols, absorbing aerosols, uh, then aerosol index value will show low. Tropospheric vertical column in which unit uh, molecules per centimeter? Could you please remind where to look at the units? Yes, uh, that is. there are two units for uh, vertical uh, tropospheric vertical column data one is molecules per meter square that is default uh, and there is a correction factor in the metadata when you print the sds list using the first code which we ran ran today uh, all the unit information is there you can also look up the unit when you open the file using the panoply which we looked at last week Uh, there is a global attribute associated with each uh, sds parameter uh, which is unit and that's where the unit information can be found question 11 extracting data in points does this script takes consideration of pulling the centroid pixel value With three by three pixels, never yes. First script finds nearest pixel to the your ground location, and then do three by three averaging for with that nearest pixel. It does not do any interpolation or average uh, or uh, of the data. Question twelve in CSV file. Why do we see month beyond twelve? How do we need to understand that? That was a bug. Uh, we have uh, just showed you how to correct that. Uh, we will make that correction and upload the corrected code on our website. In terms of computing and memory processing, what is the difference between .NET CDF? and hdf file format which one is more useful and better okay i uh, i don't think i know a lot of details about that but uh, net cdf 4 and hdf 5 are essentially same format with few differences uh, both net cdf4 is much more uh, uh, used across uh, various communities including modeling and satellite and much more popular and i think it has much more uh, uh, compression capabilities than hdf5 uh, but again uh, I, i am not i don't have more details on those Question fourteen: How can I modify the code to map the tropomy aerosols for a small region like a country? In order to do that, uh, you will have to change the lat-long boundary when you are plotting uh, the data on the map. Uh, again, in the code, uh, uh, in the portion where it calls for the base map uh, on around line eighty or eighty-two. you will see it ask for upper latitude and upper longitude uh, and lower latitude and lower longitude and you can make those boundaries change and the data will plot if the data is available in the file over those your selected location it will plot them there so it should be pretty simple fix qgis useful net cdf to csv conversion uh, 
I think you can do it, uh, but I'm not familiar with the QGIS. What are the units of NO2 in the CS? I believe it says CSV file B output. It's the same unit as we did in the map uh, molecules per meter square. Question 17, can be mapped on a specific location? Uh, you, I assume you mean a specific region. Uh, the short answer is yes, and I think I have given the answer above uh, in terms of uh, where to make those change in the code. Where can we change the attribute of PNG maps to handle the font size uh, towards end of the code? Should the magnitude of OMI and TROPOMI NO2 be comparable for the same lat long grid? Yes. Uh, you can compare them and see uh, how well they compare, depending on uh, where you are looking and which grid you are looking. And there can be differences due to the pixel size. There can be differences due to the algorithms, change in the algorithms. Question 20, it appears the question is related to the errors when you are importing NetCDF. Uh, it means you do not have, this error basically tells you do not have NetCDF 4 installed properly on your Python package. Question 21. Could this data analysis be performed on any Earth Observing Imaging Tool product? Uh, again, I'm not sure what the question is, but uh, you can modify these codes to read different uh, satellite data sets. Uh, uh, you will have to make significant changes in terms of the specific name of SDS uh, and the data structure of the file. Okay, uh, I think that's all we have. Um, again, uh, thank you for uh, attending this webinar series. Uh, we will be happy to hear more comments from you. You will receive a uh, survey uh, from this webinar uh, in a couple of days. Uh, please uh, feel free to provide your feedback. The through that survey, it should not take more than five, 10 minutes of your time, but your feedback is very critical for us. So make sure you fill out those uh, surveys as you get in your email. Uh, we will try to make sure that all the transcripts of the question answer for session two and session three are posted online for your review uh, and for your future reference, all the codes, uh, with some of the modification which we just did will be posted, uh, will be available. And like I said, those who are have more experience in Python and if they're making changes in, in the codes, please share with us uh, so that we can implement in our training and uh, you will be given credit for that. Uh, with that, thank you. Uh, thank you, Melanie and Shalvin. Uh, is there anything else, Melanie, you want to say? Nope, I think that about covers everything. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Have a good day. Rest of the good. Bye-bye.